down to one <laughs> new one new event in our creative <laughs> industry series. Um, I hope you all had a good Easter break. It is with great pleasure that I return to introduce our next guest in this series, Til Weber. Til Weber is creative director of scenography at Vitre AG in Basel. And he's going to tell us a little bit about his professional path um, and the work that he's been developing also at Vitra. So Till is an architect. He's worked previously in New York, Frankfurt and Zurich before he joined Vitra in 2008. And at Vitra, he has had different creative positions. He has been responsible for creating and establishing the Vitra color and material oh. library, which was developed in close collaboration with uh, Dutch designer Hella Jungerius. And alongside this, he also has been the creative lead for the Milano presentation, Salone del Mobile Milano presentation of Vitra, Casa Vitra in 2016, and the fair presentations of Vitra at the Salone del Mobile in Milan in 2017, 18, and 19. Unfortunately, last year there was no Salone. And this year there also isn't a Salone. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm sure he would also be doing the. <laughs> the stand also this year but actually this week would have been Salone. <laughs> exactly yes here we are here we go yeah and till most recently he has uh, been the lead of the um, creative update of the vitra house uh, in val am Rhein, which i hope you all have visited and if you haven't you should come soon to see it um and yes and i'm very very happy to welcome till here today and i hope you will learn a lot from him and his work. I know I have. So it is with great pleasure that I pass the mic to Till. Welcome. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to share a bit of my experience from the last years. And thanks so much for your kind introduction, Vera. Very much appreciated, of course. And um, before I start, maybe um, I thought I give a little explanation of what I'm sharing or showing to you. I was thinking about um, what is the advantage of that? I can speak to you you're in your beginning of your career, of your education, or in the middle of it. And it's just always good to see maybe also like how um, a career can change from a regular architect to a more creative scenographist or in general, a more creative direction, art direction. And I thought it's interesting for you to show you different developments of my work career or my work experience. I like that more than career. And um, so as Vera mentioned, we were like working intensely on Milan presentations, which always refer to how we present our furniture collection, our portfolio, but also when we look at what is the trend or what are topics which matter or um, how do we in general like showcase or display our brand and next to this we developed the color material library Vera was mentioning where we work closely and with the Dutch designer Ella Jungerius and I thought it's interesting for all of you to see how detailed the work on the background is but also to see how everything is connected in a way like the work on the materials and color we did on our for our um, fabric collection our material collection is of course then connected to what we create for interior so what we consider as a new way of a vitra collage how we call it more or less and and the last topic is the vitra house change where everything kind of comes together and is like a culmination of all this experience and work and i saw so many different angles i can uh, show to you and maybe Vera, it's more you yet. You have to remind me if I'm talking too much or it's so long. It's a lot of pictures I brought. It's unfortunately not live. I would love to perform in front of you, but um, that's what it is. And I would like to share then the presentation now, if that's okay with you. Um, and here you see um, the screen. I hope it's changing to full screen now so that you have the best opportunity to see the pictures. So this is an introduction. Um, it is like a picture we did like a 2016 to illustrate how our color material library looks like. But I thought it's also interesting for you to see. I mean, we are back in the days, we have been an office company. So we were really caring for office concepts and office chairs. And also maybe the times have been different, just the sales guys um, 
selling like cognac leather colored office chairs um, is maybe not what happens today exactly that way, because an office can also look differently. Here you see a concept we developed together with Konstantin Gritschic for the Orgatech Fair in 2018. And you see already here how diverse interiors can become, even if they're considered to be illustrate or like used for an office and how many materials come together, how graphics become a topic, but also of course, how my favorite topic color um, gets uh, attention more and more. But we're doing all of this because most of the interior designers or architects start their concepts by looking for functionality, but also for uh, an atmospheric value. And this starts with the materials and the colors, of course, next to the other concepts. And I just want to warm up you a bit with what are these materials we're talking about. And if you see all this um, ancient um, fabrics here or like woven things, it's like the left picture is showing like a very raw um, braided um, woven structure. It's raped woven braided is like 5,000 before Christ and they found it in a salt mine in Austria. And the right um, example is a, a weaving, a woolen weaving on the back of a sheepskin, which I saw in a museum in, in north of Sweden. And it's also like from this fifth century, like after Christ. So it's like two different stages, but just showing you like also the, the cultural impact of, of textiles and how they always um, accompanied us and but of course textiles as we all know are a matter of taste some more strange or less but also textiles or materials and colors define so much our identity by by just expressing your own way of life and your identity or they can give a completely new face for the same furniture piece I find this is a very nice example how easily uh, the same piece, the same design gets dressed differently and has a complete different look and feel. But also they stand for certain epochs like left hand, you see um, the Visona from Werner Panton um, from the early seventies and right hand, you see like a nineties interior which is still using some classics from the fifties. So you also see how certain transitions um, survive and what makes a classic furniture piece, for example, but also how materials stand so much for a certain period. On the left side, you see the Eames um, house in, in Los Angeles, where you see so much blending into this interior and it's a case study house. So they were experimenting a lot with prefabrication. And on the right hand, you see a complete different thing. It's the United Nations headquarter, which uh, is the General Assembly Hall, the lounge, not the General Assembly Hall, sorry, which is designed by Hella Jongerius. And you see already, what a color concept can can do to a to a very large room to organize it also, but also to to set the tone for an atmospheric expression, and that's what Vera mentioned in the introduction. We transformed. This was an industrial building. It was just floor, wood floor, and white walls, and we transformed it into this casa vitra, and we created this. Uh, yeah, in Salone, like a big living room and using all the colors we developed the years before to showcase what, what we could do. And it just showcases that you have a nice topic with this golden yellow tones and then some sparkling hits of blue and pink. And that creates immediately such a, a lifeful atmosphere. So it's a lot about the materiality and the colors, which also are a big part of defining the room or also to set accents to make your eyes also jump and connect. And I like to say always that it's a bit like painting with objects in a way, you just have to imagine how to balance. So even the blue cushion, which is connected to the blue chair gives a certain center point for that point of view. And it just illustrates you, some people might think, oh, it's just a cushion. But in this case, the cushion is important to repeat that color in a smaller batch somewhere else. And these small details really matter. Here you see um, a photo presentation we did on the Vitra campus in front of our shower depot, which is exhibition uh, like showcasing all the chairs or like a part of the chair collection of Paul Fehlbaum. And we wanted to illustrate how the new color collection and pattern looks like. For that, I created this color concept showing how all the things look like next to each other. And it's like I laid out all the swatches for this, so not the real furniture, of course. And then 
we did the shooting, which is a real photo. It's not a collage or something like this. Um, but also like with all this content we have created and all the ideas you always have in your mind, it's always so important to start with key concepts and to visualize what atmosphere you have in your mind or what expression. And I think not always starting with renders, maybe you do more hands-on. I prefer much more, these are handmade collages from real material and cutting out photos or whatever, and then they are scanned. But I think they illustrate nicely the idea behind something and you can still consider and you have the fantasy to imagine something. I don't show you the result now because I do this later for you with other examples, but it just illustrates you generic concepts for space by illustrating materiality and the atmosphere. And I think this is important to understand. For me, I don't like renders at all. So um, I'm more hands-on 2D person because the 3D, the 3D we create um, in real and we can see it after, which is a lucky thing. The Milan Fair 2019 was more into looking at different types and lifestyles. And we defined these four characters by looking at um, maybe also more extremes to be more clear, but these four characters we wanted to illustrate by um, developing interiors for them. And next to this, affair has a lot of other topics you have to think about so it's a bag it's invitation but also like to see this is a giant fair it's 600 square meters or more than 600 square meters it has a cafe it has a welcome area or has two cafes it has public areas it has fair, four pavilions showcasing interiors and even windows showcasing different topics and and it's just to illustrate you that it's always like a bigger thing which comes together and then there are many layers of interior topics which you have to bring together to make this one result possible and as i said the four characters we've chosen we also thought that they might be nicely represented by selecting some nice vitra furniture to represent these lifestyles and as you see the first thing was like also to think about what kind of materiality stands behind this kind of um persons, these characters, this way of living, and you see quite nicely how these mood boards, which you see below, blend into, an, in a way, to the character, and we did not style them before, so it's not a fake person we're looking at, it's just we took them, and then we created kind of an um, illustration around, and that's also like part of the process, so you know what you're doing, you work with the furniture, you have a briefing from our um, chief design officer, this is a uh, news we want to present. So we also have to make sure you are aware of bringing the briefings in and make sure you are showing what is needed to be shown. And so other layers come into it, like other carpet topics, material topics, styling topics, uh, all the things Vitra doesn't produce to create that look for each of that characters, which we call Bohemian Nomad Collector and Global Entrepreneur. And this is one of them. I show you three. I think I focus on three. You also see it's also important that there is a detailed planning. There's one very detailed planning for the fair booth, but also like for the, the furnishing of the room. It's really like very precisely planned what stands where and in which color combination and what's the backdrop and what's the floor and the back, backdrop color and the wall color. And you can see nicely how this became more clear. And then I did a collage, which showcases you in a nice way um, what the atmosphere will look like. And that's also what I presented to our, or to my boss, which is then at the end, my client. Um, and it's nice that they get the vibe, but it's not sh selling you the entire final thing. And that's, I think a good thing because it keeps your mind open to, to fantasize, to, to dream a bit. And if you look at this now, this one and the result, it is close, but of course it's different and it's way more detailed, but I think they are kind of nicely connected and you feel the red thread running through from the beginning to the end. And I think that's important for concepts to, to stick to your idea and not to mix with too many others. This is a very chaotic thing now, but another one was a more an atelier office for younger people. And you see already with a material palette, 
and the floor plan and the library in the back, it's a very different style. And, and if you see then also the collage, it's more clean, but very friendly, a bit ecological materials, but also with plants and this peachy and um, orange accents with a green floor. And then you see the result and which is of course more intense. And also the styling is always very important to create a lifeful atmosphere that you immediately get what, what happens and how it comes, where the idea comes from when you see it, but also people just feel the energy in it. And if they look at this at the fair in Milano, there's always a lot of excitement about it because I think people feel the engagement and the love you bring into some things. And of course, I don't do this alone. This is always teamwork. This is not myself. It's always a partner um, and other people who support a lot to develop concepts together and to make this happen. Last but not least, a very classical um, collector, how we call it, like the marble floor and large painting and very expressive colors, as you see already in the drawing and in the illustration and the collage as well. And then the result um, is quite close to it. And again, what I mentioned with the picking up the colors in an interior is it's not the solution, but for me, it's kind of key that you have this um, blue table, but there is a blue cushion on the right side. So it's about balancing and there's this orange carpet in the front, but you also have a rusty brown orange on the chair or in the painting in the back. So it's really a lot about this balancing and with color and the right amount of color or material. It doesn't has to be only color. It can also be the same with materiality but to see how it all blends into each other and, and creates a certain energy, I would call it. And also like how objects always communicate with, you, with each other. That's I think what you can clearly see here. And also of course you have some smaller jokes like this watch on the background, which is of course not a collector's piece. In that case, it's not expensive, but we liked it. And it was a good thing to add and to break a bit this high-end um, interior in a way. So it's also important to find a good break and a little fun within all of this to not be just too serious. That is, I think, the tricky point to figure out what it is. So the first thing was a bit about the Milano presentations because these have been only possible because we worked intensely on our color material library, which stands for like all the textiles we're offering and all the colors. and Hella Jongero started this um, very early and I thought, or I hope a lot of you might know her work, but she is quite an icon and also one of the first stronger uh, female designers um, within the last decade. And, and, and it was a great chance to work with her. And she, uh, um, she was educated in the Design Academy in Eindhoven and she started right now to do things for Droog. It's a, a, a Netherlands, uh, and design company and it started with this funny objects of vases which are not strong of ceramic it's like the silicon vase or the rubber thing which is also like wobbling and you, you, you push it and it's like shaking so lots of funny things and for us she did the polar sofa in 2005 and where also i would say vitra realized wow textiles have such an impact to create things and to cover furniture so she has obviously an eye for it. And so um, Hella was asked to develop um, furniture, textiles, and colors for Vitra. And here you see a beautiful work of her. It's called 300 Vases, the ceramic. And the 300 vases are glazed by different industrial, natural, and semi industrial pigments to just show the diversity of it and how it can work all together nicely, because it's a very big part of her work to work with imperfection which can also still happen in industry and then maybe create this little extra um, atmospheric value which you wouldn't have with a perfect industrial um, perfection or industrialization. Um, another nice example how the research of Heller also influenced in that case very directly a product. So you see a color wheel which is showing certain um, pigments are reacting stronger to daylight so as you can imagine, the morning light is more cold, has more blue, and the, the midday is uh, the, the, the daylight we know so far as the regular daylight. And 
in term, turning to the afternoon, the light becomes more warm and golden. So this illustrates like how certain pigments or colors like a red or a green or a blue or gray are more stable and others are less. You see as an example, like the on the top left in, on 11 o'clock, there's a red which turns really from a red pink or from a pink into a red. So it's very instable in a way. And for us, it was a very nice research to think about this hang it all and color them in a new um, way. And here you see how that happened just to flip and you see how all the colors were picked because they were defined by code. And so it was like just shivering the wheel around and then you had the green version or the white version. So a very nice idea how sometimes these um, researchers can turn into products directly, but it's not always the time. Atella also works since 2015 on updating the business class for KLM with all their material choices and the uh, color concepts for it. And also here, um, when you remember an airplane and with all the gray covered uh, uh, seats and uh, then maybe a white or gray cushion in your bag, it's so boring and so dull. And oh, just the blue inside the seat or the cushion with something happening on it or the floor or the carpet gives so much more atmosphere to this uh, air cabin, which is, I think, a great um, approach. In 2017, Hella did this giant exhibition, which is, I think, if I'm correctly informed now, at the Gewerbe Museum in Winterthur. I highly recommend to visit it because it's showing you in a very nice, very artistic way how colors change on surfaces, what you do with weavings, how black colors work. And it was really nice to see how this light or color catches, how she calls these objects, are like working with shadows. And you see very much how the faceted objects changing. It's always the same blue or gray or brown or light, light gray, but how the shadow in, uh, in uh, how you say that, how the shadow affects so much the color appearance of an object. And so in 2008, Hella was then officially announced to be um, their designer for the Vita Color Material Library, working on first concepts. And I think it was good because Vitra had a big mass on, on materials. Each designer selected something for himself. So um, we had sometimes three different reds, but very close to each other. So that was a big cleaning up the mass, you can call it. And there was a basic concept to say, like, we have four basic color worlds, like the reds facing the darks and the lights facing the greens and vice versa, red versus lights and dark versus, sorry, and red versus green and light versus dark. And so it, it helped to clear the system and to, to, to clearly say these colors look good on this objects or furniture pieces or fabrics. And that's how we start to set it all up. And that was kind of the beginning. And from that day on, we worked and here you see like we were we, we tried to stay in this four color worlds, but of course red doesn't mean only red and green doesn't mean only green. A green can become bluish or yellowish or turquoiseish, and a red can become pinkish or yellowish. So within all this, we had this world growing, but curated growing. So it's not like accidentally happening. We were always looking at an entire portfolio and then if you look at uh, this was 2012-13 when we started together with Hella and I was also being part of it to work and to research how we should do more because also the home market became more important for Vitra. So the interiors, not only the offices became more important. And here you see the difference. Like we did really work four years intensely on this. So again, like it's quite a swatch between 12, 13 to 16, 17. And this is an ongoing project. And it's it's very helpful because um, it steers a certain range. It helps to clear um, and it helps also the designers and ourselves to be a bit more focused and not totally lost. I mean, color spectrums are enormous and you can just get lost with being happy about all the colors you have in front. This is illustrating a bit how we were thinking. I mean, it's a large collection, so you see 
like all the red shades blending into each other or like the darks with the grays and the different materials look also nice when you do very minimalist black interior or how also the woods blend in, in, in nicely with our blue tones and blue plastics. So it's, I think, a very nice way of illustrating also the complexity, because it's not only a fabric or a plastic, it's also very different furniture pieces, which we have to bring together. To help us with this, we define certain bridge palettes. So um, we define certain things which existing since 2008, looking at colors which are very well also appreciated by the customers or selling well. And we defined, oh, we have certain materials, we, we're gonna grow around it. So it helped us to have an ice gray or a cream or a brick or a blue because we were referring that color or colors which are matching with this color to extend that people can make more easier arrangement within one color group or that you could easier select one color which you build around. And here you see also like, the entire thing has to come together. And this chaotic picture, which is of course a style picture, um, is showing you how even with this mass coming together, it feels like not something is like disturbing or something like this. It's just a proof in a way of what we considered is working, even if we're being the real pieces together to make a photo. And within all this um, color talks, the fabrics have become a very important topic as I was, talking in the introduction or mentioning an in introduction, it's, it's a e let's say it's the easiest part to exchange. You have a cover for a chair or a sofa or even a cushion and this cover you can easier replace than a plastic part or a metal part. And it's also easier to produce in a way, but of course the standards are high. But here you see like, um, it's a photo from um, the producer we work with in, in, in Italy. And I like it because you see all the car yarns and the colors we selected, this is already colors we defined and we do exclusive development. So the difference is that we have this color material um, library. And for this, we defined a certain palette and the fabrics we do exclusively get own exclusive colors. And I think this is a quite uh, um, rare thing in the furniture business that you have so many, um, Vitra own colors or fabrics because normally you it's too much work it's too much effort to do it but it helped ourselves also to create a very strong identity which is then at the end very important for the brand. I think it's nice to know that all the things come from Europe everything is produced in Europe the more technical fibers come from the Germans more or less the more exclusive ones from the Italians, very charming, and the more sturdy wool from Great Britain or the Nordic countries, but um, it's all very nice qualities and it's all great factories we're working with. So they really know what they're doing. We do test crazy, so it's also an important thing. You always forget to think, oh, it's a nice color, nice binding, but then you think, oh, scheiße, it's not holding long. It's just like two times you sit on it and you have a hole in it, it's not working. We do intense testing, which can be really painful for the creative part. Um, and here you see um, a very um, interesting concept we developed with Hella, and it's called Duotone. And it's always very simple. It's a plain weave, we call it. Um, it's like one thread for the, um, one thread color for the, um, oh my God, my, my English, for the Kette, uh, I didn't use it for a long time uh warp and weft one 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 color for the warp and one for the weft and then you have like numerous outrageous uh, number of um color combinations and here you see how such a warp construction looks like so you have the the warp colors a b c d e to l and four uh, 34 different weft colors so each of the colors gets a crossing and gets combined and the nice thing is that you can decide, oh, we like the Ecru color on, on A and how it is combined with seven and yellow and with 12 orange and with 27 blue. And then you have like already like a bit of concept because there's always cream in it, which makes it easier than to make it feel like a part of a collection and not totally co uh, diverse. But this at the end creates so many, many op um, swatches which we call a color blanket. And that's one of five. So we get five times this amount of fabric and that we had to cut. Um, and you see already it's very intriguing with all the shades and that comes 
Um, so the the reds are all coming because you have always different reds, uh, different warps. So it's very interesting to see what happens and after you do a selection. So here you see again the concept and this red colors we decided, and then you have to select because out of 380 colors or combinations, you, you can only like economically do maybe 28 or if it's a very well selling fabric, maybe 32. So you really have to um, limit it down and you see the selection process and you see how many close shades you have. And it's really like picking from a candy store, but it is a, a hard process and you need several days to do this. And that's the final collection. And you see two different office fabrics, which are also color coordinated. You see there are certain tones, even if they're not the same structure, they kind of picking or like referring to each other. And that's then also helpful for us because certain fabrics can be used on certain products and that's helping to, um, to work with the system, not only for us, but also for like architects like you. And uh, the duotone also is interesting to look at because from close up, as you see in the front, um, picking up the yellow and, and red one, uh, it looks so checkery. And if you look at it in the distant view, it's the mango color in the center in the back. So also it's always this, being aware of how to look at things from close, from distant. These are all considerations you have to take when you deal with materials, I think, because the, the look and the feel can change dramatically with the distance and also for your concept. If it's like a space where people more entering as a lobby and whatever, you have everything more distant. If it's like a cozy office or with a boudoir or a restaurant, maybe people are more close and the details are different. Um, you see a lot of different um, combinations because, as I mentioned in the beginning, we're not only doing the textiles because we have also to check that our plastics or the fiberglass working with it. So making this uh, nice uh, game board here, like to see how they blend into each other, to see also how a final collection would look like. And this is another process, a very different fabric. It's a wool satin and you see again piles of colors. Uh, a nice selection and all labeled that you know which color is referring to which um, number in the blanket. But also like it's not the selection of the, car, the, the, the fabrics itself. It's also that you have to really select even the thread color. So it's a lot of work behind to make things happen to also work then in industry and to be realized. So everything has to be documented. So it's not like I decided and then somebody else. It's all documented in the factory. They know exactly this color of the fabric, this color of the thread. And it, this is also only allowed for two people in the company to change it. <laughs> and this is a final palette. I wanted to illustrate you with a few fabrics, how it looks. And um, another interesting uh, project, more of furniture oriented is the Flinder sofa. It's a sofa which we developed on a jacquard loom. And as you can see on these both pictures, you see these kind of shapes with patterns. So we woven already the shape which gets cut out with a scissor and to be soon as the cover of the sofa or as a side um, um, arm rest for the sofa. And it's really nice if you see the structures and how it looks on the loom, like so you see large scale with a um, and light makes a magnifying glass or on the loom, how the pattern nicely um, is developing. And that's the loom. And you already see there's a lot of aesthetics also in the factories working. And I think um, but this is a very interesting way in how slow it is. Normally textiles are go running faster, like a shirt you have is like, eight times faster like this. So it just needs also more time to produce a complex fabric like this. But to see also the end result is this so far, you might like it, you might dislike it, but it's a very, very uh, special piece, even has this kilted aesthetics of the cover, which is a very soft blanket. So a lot of things come together. And, and also it's nice to see the raw, clean product shot and how it's integrated in an old Palazzo in Bergamo. And you see, how also the colors are picking nicely the surroundings. And this is all connected. That's what I said in the beginning. It's a way of thinking that also if you combine old and new or the contrast between this beautifully Renaissance fireplace um, 
with the sofa in front is a, is a nice contrast. And even if the sofa is new, it doesn't feel like a stranger to me at least. And always, huh? this is a, a matter of taste as well. So it's not like good or bad. Mm -hmm. But within all this color material topics, we have also like our classical products and how to deal with them and how to keep them alive, like a product which is existing like since the forties. How do you keep this alive? And therefore materials and color are very key and you have to change a palette like also fashion industry is doing it much faster like you have every spring you have a new trend color for us it's maybe not the same speed also because uh, furniture for good sake um, lasts longer but it's interesting to see that also after a certain time it's uh, um, yeah it's good to think about new things and always getting inspired and we are very lucky we have the Vita Design Museum archive and to really see the originals from the past, what decided Jean Prouvé, a very famous uh, French furniture designer and engineer slash architect, what did he do? Or how did he define colors? And of course, the more patina uh, or patinated colors look very uh, attractive to me at least. And it's always a discussion how strong a coating should be, but it's good to see how an original color looks like. And, we do samplings and also sometimes we do it wrong. So you have also like a lot of mistaken colors, it's all lacquered. And then you have to think about what is the collection and what's the idea if you do a plastic cell and, and how is this blending with our veneers. And here you see the final collection, how it just looks very, very um, yeah, natural, how they stand there and how they work together. And I think it's a good example. And you see the color prouvé, um, palette on the right in this little circle. But also, as I mentioned, our designers have a very strong characters. You see uh, most of them and it's interesting because they have identities also by not their strong characters and design language, but also part of the design language is the color palette they use. And I have a lot, but I picked out Jasper who is renowned for a very um, minimalist um, approach and very calm and quiet. And as you see, it's not having a lot of other tones in it. Now he has a bit of yellow, but he doesn't have a crazy blue or pink or so. So it's like interesting to see how such a palette develops. And But he has to pick from the material palette we defined for the entire Vitra color material library. So that's important to know. So it helps us to limit before and then they can show, choose. And if they have a very special wish, of course, we try to make it happen. But here you see us working as also a colleague of mine, Brigitte, who works mostly on, on colors and, and materials in an intense way. And you see how much sampling we do all the time. And it's uh, interesting to see how diverse this all can be and how many samples we do to do find or to find the right perfect blue or the right red. But also, as I said, the special color can always happen. So we have this special blue, which makes also pro product very iconic. So also sometimes it's needed that the product gets this color and it then suddenly is a color. The product is defined by color also. It's also interesting to know. And here also seeing how many samples to do an update for the Eames um, shell. Uh, you see, um, we were spreading out shells uh, from the entire archive, sampling Bridget Lecker, tons of um, different uh, shell colors next to it. And we blending in the textiles because they also are an important part of it. And here you see the result, how the entire opportunities look like from the reds of the pinks, cream, yellow, greens, olives, blues, shady blues, grays, and again, orange and red. So this entire palette, which is possible, but only because we were like kind of um, interlacing everything with each other. And here you see work in progress. Um, this is like the library, how we document it for ourselves so that we are like also having a visual board of what is actually happening. What are the colors we're having for all the hardcover materials like metals and plastics or fiberglasses or recycling materials, which we're also having um, right now being part of the collection. So this was more the part, if I'm correct, because I don't see my foils uh, in the presentation, but I think next is the Vitra house. Yes, I know my presentation. So this beautiful view showing you the Vitra house, which you might have visited, as Vera mentioned, hopefully, if not, 
even better because it's looking very nice now. You should really come when the situation is um, easier to travel. And we have this beautifully new garden by Pete Udo, which is a garden made of, created of um, more than 30,000 perennials. It's really beautiful. We have even bees on the campus. So it's really beautiful to stroll around, to look at the house. But I thought it's interesting. I know my time is running, but I think we manage in, in 10 to 15 minutes. <clears throat> the Vitra House was actually built uh, in 2010. And 2010, um, I was also already part of the conceptual team for interiors and showcasing the brand. And it's interesting to see how also Vitra changed as a brand 2010. We have not been that crazy strong connected to the home interiors and 2020 we do, we are. A lot of things changed, also our own awareness to um, showcase that we can do interiors for homes. And it's interesting, this is a large building, it's 12 different houses stacked on top of each other. It's five floors, ground floor, and then first to fourth floor. Um, it's including a shop, a cafe, uh, interior studio, like lots of things happening. And um, I thought I'd give you like an introduction of how we deal with it. I didn't do this myself alone. I have this long time partner, Connie, I work with also doing all the Milan settings together. And it's also good information, I think, as I'm working 14 years for Vitra now, Connie is an external partner and not from Mitra, but it's so important to have always this feedback from outside because sometimes you're like so much in your own soup and you don't see certain things anymore. And then having this strong creative from the outside telling you like, but this bullshit, why do you do this? Like consider it again or like, it's, it's super important and I'm very happy about this. Um, we did decide to work on four basic principles for the house because sometimes you have to find a structure it's 12 different houses lots of topics so how to get a bit of clarity into it or structure so we said strong architecture is there we want to reveal it again to emphasize on it we wanted to create inspiring interiors what we call vitra collages and we wanted to develop interesting new um, product presentations which helped also to sell because it's more or less a department store for design, as I like to say. And we wanted to focus on more commercial aspects because we didn't have shop and shop areas in the house, which we have now. Um, programming this entire thing, what happens where, on which floor? You see, this is just a snapshot from my office and it's work in progress. It's a lot of changes, ideas, You over, and it's, Again, it's analog. It doesn't happen only on the computer. It's not hidden in a file, which I open. It's like a proactive analog thing. You print out, you do post-its and ideas you have, you pop up, you print on, you pin on. It's like super important, I think, to have that visible because sometimes you forget something, then you look at it again and then the idea starts to develop or redevelop. I find this is super important for large objects and, and projects. And here you see also like finding the right mix of materials, playing, uh, working with, with other people from other teams to make sure it's right. And we had like more than 3,500 uh, 3, square meters that we had to fill. It's a lot of space. And here you see a final mood board um, showcasing what we wanted to do. Um, also, we did define a new entire corporate identity for the house together with a graphical agency from London. So it's a lot of different layers coming into each other, even defining the menu for the cafe was part of it and to define a new shop low, low layout. So you see a lot of layers coming into each other. Um, and next to this, we looked at areas we didn't use before. We have this beautifully winding staircase and we did a large wall illustration showing the history of Vitra, which is a hand-painted illustration from Norwegian illustrator, Oskar Grona. And it's just showing the start from Vitra when Papa Fehlbaum was um, starting his company in Basel to now where Nora Fehlbaum is leading and we have the Piet Rudolf Garden. So it's a very nice way you walk your way up and you. You learn something and it's a very nice and we did sample it and then we did this vinyl stencil and then they painted it black and then everything colored was painted by hand um, with lots of heart and energy 
And I, I like this also pictures from the time when it was setting up and not just the final perfect ones. I think it's very charming to see. And let's start with the loft. Um, the loft is a top floor and the top floor we consider always um, as an apartment. So it's something which is not easily just a brand presentation. It should be like you come into someone's nice apartment, more private. And it's important to decide your with, with who we are doing this. And I was, uh, I want to also illustrate like by traveling or seeing shows or biennales wherever, Milano, uh, Venice, this was in Chicago. I spotted this young American uh, architects, Charlotte Hyman Herrero. And then I was watching at their work and how they developed. And then in 2019, we decided, um, wow, yeah, let's do the love with them. And they developed a very nice idea. And again, I know I'm repeating myself, but this is a hand illustration, like a watercolored illustration, showing how he imagined, how he envisioned the room. We were discussing. I had the brief that I said, like, I would love to do something with carpet. We don't want to have the wooden floor again. So they were reacting to the brief and then setting up very nice uh, interior plannings, very detailed. And what I find super crazy, if you look at the sketch, which is from September or November 19, and you see the, fic the picture from uh, September 2020. I find it quite nice how close it comes to the idea without that the idea revealed every detail before. Um, this is the other area, the bedroom. Um, and also, again, nice photography is super important to illustrate and to document to others who can you can visit. It's nice for you that you see a bit more details now. On level three, we focused more on production and chairs. So we were inspired by the factory, which we have on the campus, by all this aesthetic and the perfection and planning. And we did, of course, made it made to measure for our installation. We have this giant chair rack showing all the different chair opportunities. And we have this assembling station showing you how chairs getting assembled and what all counts to make a perfect chair. But next to this also like showing nice interiors, very naturally um, composed palette of uh, nice linen and leathers and woods with this beautiful sky of Akaris. And as you see also the, the connection to the outside, to the landscape is very important for the interior. So it's also something you have to reflect. And on level three, uh, on level two, we were focusing more on the interiors themselves. So we have two contrasting interior topics. We have like a more a layout which also uses strongly the architecture. We have an inbuilt kitchen counter and the double height space. And here you see the layout, um, the kitchen and the dining area on the left, and then the more the center living in the center. And on the right hand on the window, you have more the library home office. And you see the, the mood board, the palette, which we did very elegant, very natural with this terracotta accents. And then you see the pictures and with the architecture. So Maybe here you understand also what I meant with like, we have to reveal the architecture. So there's this beautiful winding staircase. So let's integrate it into the setting and not like neglect it. Also here from the top, you see the kitchen counter, table, flowers, decoration, all this matters. It's all these layers which matter. It's like very, uh, it looks very natural, but it's a lot of things you have to consider in advance. And here more the view to the window, see the campus and the nice light and also the combination of furniture is very nice. And next to this, we said we want to show something very contrasting. So the pictures you see here is a living area and also like a living room, but you see already it's made more furniture, it's more busy. Already the palette tells you it's something else, more pinks and brass and yellow shades. and. Here you see a detail and the carpet blends in with this crazy fabric of the sofa I showed you before. And there you see also what a wallpaper can contribute. So a lot of the character comes from the combination of materials and fabrics and the wallpaper, which gives us a way more in intimacy um, than if it would be white. Here is really nice how you see how everything blends into each other. And level one, we're having more like a simple area where we, which we call a designer's library. It's really a library where people can read books about designers and architects. 
and also there the layout with the graphic designers was important so that you also have like maybe more funny messages or like uh, illustration and boxes we did print and the books and the communication about designers and another material palette so you see always the materials are very basic important part and then in a snapshot from the rack himself with information about books and designers and architects. Last but not least, a very uh, crazy space. It's called the collector space, which is more gallery looking space. Um, crazy materials. You see already reflection of a disco ball. And here we go. It's very breezy, but co soft colors, very pastel colors. We have been inspired a bit by Miami and the soft pastel art deco, but also um, doing like some artworks like this giant egg, which is uh, creating a lot of atmosphere with this beautiful shape, which the egg just has, we just blown it up. But also if you see how everything comes together again, the Sotas Miro from uh, um, Potronova from Florence, which is like when it's on, it's shining pink. So it's a very nice thing or just having a mirror top for the classic ins table, just to cut out a mirror out of glass and put it on top makes such a difference and you don't change anything you just have an additional layer on it i think it's very nice to see and in the ground floor we have the more public areas so we did sample shops we did develop an entire shop system which is illuminated we did define the materiality the look and feel of the shelves and we did do the new shop so we did everything new and here you see like the final shop where you see that how the shelves we defined they're really talking or reacting to the shape of the architecture so to, 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 to connect to this iconic shape of the house. And it works very nicely because we can use also the height of the room and have a nice product presentation. We have an interior studio where people get consultations and you have all the materials available. Available, We're having like drawers full of samples. It's super nice. It's really like, uh, as I mentioned before, the candy shop. And the cafe was also quite intense. And as you see also here, one version was we do it all black and white with a crazy counter in black and white striped, uh, or we do it colorful. And as you see, things change over process. The colors have become a bit more silent or reduced and we have a marble counter and it becomes a very joyful cafe because um, the cafe is more used for the day and not for the evening and here you see an impression with a marble counter and the delicious cakes in the back on the right. Yeah, I am done. Thank you so much for listening. Well done. Thank you so much for sharing. I got it. What a dose of input. I would invite, um, we have a few minutes before we can break again. Um, and I know the Maya 4 class is going to have the opportunity to talk to Till this afternoon for a more sort of uh, intense Q&A session. Um, but if anybody who is not going to be there in the next session wants to ask a question, I see Celine is already thinking to Till. Thank you, so interesting. Thank Till. you, Celine. You are <laughs> opening up minds and hearts. Um, if anybody has a question for Till, please feel free to ask him now. Exactly, it's for free. I don't charge exactly. you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, all the other members of Maya 4 will have enough questions, I'm sure, for the next session, which we will have in a few minutes. Maybe um, I would like to ask you a question, Till, actually. Um, I'm thinking like your role at Vitra has changed and, and, and shifted and you've gone on to always operate in like sort of a broader uh, stage with a bigger reach and so on. And for example, if Milan and Casa Vitra, for example, are let's say temporary uh, uh, manifestations, the Vitra house now, it's permanently something that will stay for, for a long time, you know? And um, I was wondering how I feel about that, you know, working more and more towards things that are more more permanent, less ephemeral and more permanent. Um, I mean, I feel that the consideration for the project is maybe longer or like with a certain depth because it's different to create a stage or a set 
which is like always different than the real architecture. I think reacting, it's a strong impact to have the architecture of Hedzog Demeron you have to play with. We know a bit the places where we can do interiors in the house, so not all the places are like the best choice for an interior. So we know there are the, the, the pieces or the parts of the house where we can really play them. And I kind of even like it that I know things stay longer. Now it's an unfortunate phase that not that many people could visit at the house. It was only during the summer when it was open and I think until October and then everything was closed. So there hasn't been that many people who could see the house and therefore I'm even happy that we didn't change. But of course we already made a plan for 21, 22, which areas change when because this always has an impact. That was important to me when we did the new project that if you change something somewhere, it has always an impact to the entire house. You cannot just replace one thing without considering the entire thing, because otherwise you've, you don't have a balance anymore. So this is more what matters when we do an exchange or we do small changes, because we, we, we found that certain things are very strong and as that didn't last for the last year, or like we're looking at people, I think it is good that it stays and we do like tiny updates with a certain color, which also works. And it also is an uh, like resourceful way of dealing with it instead of exchanging everything every three months. The plan is that we ex redo the entire house besides cafe and shop every 18 months, everything should be renewed, or renewed or replaced on 18 months to 24 months. So one and a half to two years should be changed because under normal circumstances, people getting also bored because there are salespeople also coming and architects coming in again, and there should be always an inspiration. Mm -hmm. It's interesting also, I was very fascinated by this uh, sort of very big love that you showed and also explained about all these issues that relate to the color and material library. I feel like many times when we are you know, engaged in the study of architecture or even interior architecture, that you are given to consider a lot of big things, but somehow maybe the fabric of the chair is not the one thing that you're going to look at very precisely. Maybe you think about it, but you don't think about it with the level of detail that you were expressing here. And what I think is very, very interesting is also that this understanding that everything works together as part of a group that you really have to understand the minor things because just like you said, if you just change the fabric of one chair or if you just put a cushion in one couch, you can potentially change the perception of the entire- Yeah, it's thing. a composition. That's why I'm saying it's like a painting with objects in a way. It's a composition. It's really a composition. And this is, of course, something that you can only get with experience because you need to have time to dig into these materials, into these colors and to understand all of these things. So it's something that I feel like, I don't know, maybe 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 you could comment on that. I mean, to my to my uh, uh, impression, it comes with trial and error, with with spending a lot of time. With devoting yeah, I think that's a big part of it. But it's also sometimes intuition. Hmm. As a sometimes it's also, or sometimes some things happen by mistake and there's a beauty in it and you just think, yes, that's it. Just keep it, you know, like it's, a, I think it's not black or white, but I think a lot of experience belongs to, to develop these processes and to make them manageable in a certain time, I think. Mm -hmm. But also it's important to not forget the playfulness or to, yeah, to try out new things. I think there's always like, just believe a bit what you're feeling in a way, what's right. Well, I think that's great. I mean, my impression in your presentation was that we were watching like an Olympic swimmer. You know how you always look at these Olympic swimmers that make these crazy somersaults and you're like, oh, it looks so <laughs> You know, it's 25 years of practice of jumping into this board, from this board into this. Board. Yeah, I hope it was not too many pictures for you guys because it's like a lot and for sure a lot of information, but I thought it's a nice, it was exactly this 55 minutes I thought I can manage to, to bring you through. I think it was fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so I don't see any questions in the chat. So we will meet again with Maya for an hour, right? 30. Yeah. yeah.
So we'll see you there. And for everybody else, thank you for joining. And thank you so much, Till, for your presentation. You're welcome. Have a nice day, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.